This is Star Talk. This is Star Talk, and I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. I work at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, where I serve as director of the Hayden Planetarium. And today, I have with me my co-host, Chuck. Nice. That's right. Hey, Neil. Chuck. Good to be here, man. Always good to have you. It's always my pleasure. And you're wearing your, your, your official NASA uniform? Yes, without a doubt. Uh, you know, I figured uh, this was appropriate attire for what we are doing. You know, that, and it's the only clean... <laughs> oh, that's, thank you. That's right. <laughs> Making that clear. So this is a, this is a Cosmic Queries edition of yes. Star Talk. Yes, it is. And in this Cosmic Queries, we're going to be talking about the science of war. Yeah, man. Ooh, science of humans at war. Yeah, and I have to tell you, man, uh, people are obsessed with this subject. I, I, I don't understand how, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I have never received the uh, breadth of queries. Because oh, you solicited questions on this topic yes. already. Yes, we have okay. solicited questions from all over the internet. I was told this morning that this would be the topic, but you've been scheming <laughs> all week on all this. All week long, we've been receiving <laughs> questions, and I have to tell you that people are very passionate about it, and they're, uh, you know, they're doing a lot of deep thinking, you know? Okay. Some of the questions, I'm like, you were clearly high when you wrote that question. <laughs> right. You had to be high to write that question. Because <laughs> I, 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 I don't have any, I mean, I, I, while you don't get to see the questions. Plus, that's true. But though I be a scientist, I have no particular expertise in this topic. Right. Okay, so I figured, okay, then they plunked a book down in front of me called Grunt, The Curious Science of Humans at War. Mm. So I said, damn, I got to read this book like in the next hour. But then they told me, no, Mary Roach, the author of the book, yes. is here with us. Yes. From Oakland, California. Mary Roach, yes. yes. Thank you, Mary. This is not your first time on Star Talk. No, no. It's like your no, fourth no. time or something. I think we, yeah, uh, the four, yeah. Yeah, you've got like the coolest star talking in books we could ever find so great great to have you on here so basically these questions are going to be for mary yeah for the i'll for, I'll, I'll, have, I'll be mary's sidecar on this right. i could back her up with some physics if we need it right but this is her book yeah for the most part this is uh this is what people and want mary to i'm not going to lie to you and say oh i read this book and it's, uh, i haven't read it yet i just saw it like this minute right, no problem every other talk show host is lying to you when they said they read your book oh, i know you, yeah. you know this i know okay. i haven't read it either okay. <laughs> I, don't, I, have, I don't remember what's in it i wrote it a long time ago All right We'll see what these. We'll see what the people say. <laughs> listen, you know, like I said, some of the questions are out there. But just you before know. you go in, oh, go ahead. Just, just an overview. Yeah. What is this subject? Okay, so this is military science, but specifically, n not the weapons and the bombs and the right. strategy, which I, from, you may have a lot of questions there about that. When I will turn those all over to you. Okay. So this is the human. Right. The human, the human condition. condition. Yeah, it's like extreme heat right. and loud noise and right. fear and panic right. and flies and diarrhea and all of the things that people don't necessarily think about but the military thinks about because it knocks soldiers out of commission and anyway so yeah that kind of so it's, it's all in here so this this is like your this there. was your next project after all these other completely far-flung places you have been in yeah. your book portfolio yeah you'd think i would take a body of knowledge that i've worked on and build upon that so that but i don't know no, no. Yeah. i gotta start all <laughs> over again start all over. knowing nothing all right so let's yeah. try this okay yeah well, no no wait but still before okay what is the most weirdest scientific thing you can share with us about military grunts. Okay, here's okay. Here's just just, just the out, soil here first. The book starts out with the chicken gun, and I love the chicken. The chicken be, gun. Because I like to say the word chicken whenever possible. Right. The chicken gun. I think I know the chicken gun story. Chicken Do gun. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have never. I don't Do think I'm familiar with the chicken gun. Yeah, it's, you're, you're testing the 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 canopy mm -hmm. of airplanes of yeah. fighter pilots. Okay. Right. So okay. The, the chicken is a stand-in for your turkey vulture, your Canada goose your starling, whatever it is. It's kind of a worst case scenario because the chicken, it's, a, it's kind of an odd choice because it doesn't, chicken doesn't they actually fly. fly. They fly. Yeah. You're fly. not going to, no matter how long you're a pilot, you are never you're going gonna to hit actually a chicken. hit well, a it's chicken. It's a bird and it's yeah. readily variable at your grocer's. And it's consistent. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you, you take a frozen chicken, you thaw it out, you load the chicken gun and you fire it at the, the canopy. Right. Yeah. So At the same speed that the plane would otherwise encounter it. Flying through, flying through the air. Right. right. But it was, it, there were a lot of thought went into this because there's also, because they're, they're like, well, I, the chicken, this will be, a, it's, it's very dense, it's a big, heavy thing, that'll be great. But in fact, there's something called, pause for drama, the feathered bullet phenomenon. Which the feathered is bullet, bullet phenomenon. phenomenon. 
tiny little bird, you know, starling right. maybe, you know, right. hits the windshield, whew, appear just like a bullet whew, right into the pilot. So, gotcha. yeah, so, you know, you think you have it figured out. Yeah, we'll use a chicken. And then there's... Then and then all of a sudden, a tiny bird comes through and shoots you in the head. Well, wait, because the bird uh, peers a tinier hole, and yeah, yeah. it's a different kind of impact, exactly. basically, it's, that was not previously considered. It's a more considered. focused, it's, it's closer to a bullet. Okay, so to test this, they should just shoot bullets at... <laughs> they, they could do that. Chickens... You sit here, right. and let's see right. the bullet hits you. Yeah. <laughs> the canopy. Ready? Right, right. Go. Or find a finch that's packing. <laughs> <laughs> have, a, yeah, have a bird fire a gun. Right, exactly. Now, just four days ago, I was at Edwards Air Force Base, and I saw the canopy of the F-22 fighter and it was large and beautiful it was completely transparent mm -hmm. and what the pilots were telling me is that now it's not just a canopy to their side and to their front it is completely around them and so they have full high yeah. quality visual confirmation of anything that's around them right and i said shouldn't you be flying with instruments rather than relying on your own damn eyes yeah that's normally the pilot's way Oh, okay. Rely no. on instruments. <laughs> as I, no, if you're a fighter pilot, that's what I thought. Yeah. But, yeah. but anyhow, let's get to. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So that's so a good, anyway, interesting example. Chicken, yeah, the chicken, the chicken gun. The chicken, chicken gun. The problem I found out is that when birds, birds and planes take off into the wind, so the birds are like, oh, la, 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 you know, heading along. They're not yeah. looking behind, so they, they, they don't have a visual awareness to get out of the way. So that was a. That's a problem. They're not looking at what's coming at them. Right. Yeah. The right. planes coming up from behind. But for me, that's one of the, uh, one of the most beautiful metaphors. Do tell. It's in life. Mm -hmm. Here we go. When the wind is against you. Right. Remember, that is exactly the condition to take planes flight. take flight. Wow. And that's a be that is a beautiful metaphor. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, mine is when and the wind Canada is... And geese. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm sticking with the airplane here. Right, exactly. Why do you ruin my metaphor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I said chicken. <laughs> and I chose the more lovely Canada goose. Yeah, the plane wants the highest speed it can be relative to the air. It's not about the ground. Right. It's about the air. So you take off into the moving air, then mm -hmm. uh, you can take off at a lower ground speed because your airspeed's higher. That's all. That's gotcha. going. And the birds figured that out too. Yeah. 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 Very yeah. intelligent. So let's do this. Chuck, you solicited yeah. questions okay. on this topic? And we have them. And our first question is a Patreon patron's question, which, of course, if you... Uh, if you actually support us on Patreon, then uh, we will uh, put your question to the top of the queue. And Is that right? Precedent. Yes, as a matter of fact. They're uh, actually buying their way to the top of the thing? I, I can think of no better way to get people to participate. Okay. Uh, or to get votes. Okay. okay. <laughs> Buy the votes. Okay. Uh, but, uh, what's, right. your, all right, what's your first question? So, uh, this is from Jeff Prime, who is a Patreon patron. And Jeff wants to know this from Omaha, Nebraska. My unit and I were deployed in Iraq from 2007 to 2008. I personally have known several men from my unit that suffer from PTSD, while other members do not. With all other variables being equal, is there a biological reason why some soldiers handle war differently in a mental capacity that helps explain why some soldiers suffer PTSD while others do not? Good one, Mary. That's a very good, good question. One. Very yes, good question. Yes, and I do not know the answer. Cool. Yes. Okay. There right. you have it. There. There you have it. Yeah. And moving on. <laughs> no, I'm say, joking. <laughs> I can reflect on this fact. There's probably, uh, there's probably... A reason. Yeah, I, I, I would think that if we knew that uh, definitively, then we would be able to delineate why that is and then look for a cure right. to PTSD. No, what or, or, or keep those or people, keep those people out, out, out of, of Right, combat. which is what one of the things in the book was uh, they were looking at heat injuries, and there's a huge individual variation in who can acclimate to extreme heat, mm -hmm. like who can feel like start sweating heavy and sooner, and mm -hmm. there's like, like, I can deal with this, and other people can't, and they get right. heat stroke, and they sometimes die. I'm pretty They're good in a wide like, range of temperatures. Yeah. And what I found is, oh, could you put on the heat? Oh, could you put on the heat? And I'm just kind of yeah, well, chilling with the cool. Right. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just... You're self-regulating. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. I, I, it's not that I don't feel hot or feel cold. It's that I'm okay with it. No, you have a... Uh, See, that's uh, probably psychological. You just roll yeah. with everything. Maybe it is psychological it is. rather yeah. than physiological. I, in either case, right. you still want to know who's susceptible to PTSD right. and who isn't. Right. 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 And, of course, there's that very famous scene. I know, only know it from the film. I, I assume it was true. With Patton 
uh, walks into a uh, infirmary. An infirmary. Yes. And there's these wounded soldiers yeah. there, bandits, and there's one yes. soldier who has no wounds at all. He's there in tears at the edge of the he bed. Has what they called back then shell shock. Yeah, it was yeah. shell shock. And then combat fatigue. And then and, it was combat fatigue. And, and now right. it's PTSD. That's now right. PTSD. Right. Not when it wasn't enough syllables. You got to keep it. <laughs> yeah. Because more real when you have more exactly. syllables. Give People us an acronym. Fi- finally pay Give attention us an acronym. to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he slapped. He bitch slapped. Yeah, he did the soldier, and th- this made it to the press that he had no sort of compassion. No compassion. For, yeah, it was like empathy for mm-hmm. this. Or empathy young man. for the. Yeah, and right. he was saying he didn't bother him apparently, so he figured everybody else should. I guess it was a day when psychological injury was right. not viewed as the same as physical injury, whereas right. today right. so often. Uh, right. This is how we do. It. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, what, what else you got? That's a great question. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> it remains a great question without an answer available uh, from this table. Well, okay. <laughs> you know, well, I don't have an answer. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Uh, now this one is really for Neil, uh, Mary, uh, and I'm reading it, Neil, because I'm not sure what this guy's talking about. Okay. Okay. Uh, and this is from Nick. Whew. Sazfransky. Sazfransky. Do you think that's right? Sazfransky, right? Sazfransky. 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 Look, if you start Fransky. pronouncing names correctly, then we won't know what to do with you. you <laughs> pronounce it however you want, and that's your thing now. That's my thing. I don't Could t- be Zafransky. I don't yeah. know. Zafransky, right? Zafransky. What else? Zafransky. Zafransky. Okay, here we go. I don't know. Um, uh, this is what he says. I'm a young sci-fi uh, uh, writer and fantasy. I'm currently working on a hard science fiction book. My question is, how much do we understand, here's the thing, Neil, exotic particles? What, if any, effect they do have on the human body? Um, and, and then he says, if you could put a blurb about my book, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so uh, I don't think I'm going to do the blurb about the book. but Well, I think I have a way to, to link this back to Mary. But we, we have the portfolio of particles that exist, that right. have been measured. They right. have names, they have masses, they have you know energies in different states and this sort of thing and half-lives. And so some particles just go straight through you like neutrinos. Right. Billions go through you every square centimeter every second from the sun and they do nothing to us they don't interact what matters is if they interact with you that's the difference okay and if they interact they could do damage and so so this is a so if you want to weaponize a particle you would make some kind of device that you know contains particles that will interact with your body in some way, mm. mess with your DNA, mm. mess with your skin, mess with whatever, and then that becomes a weaponized ray gun, basically. So you make the particles a delivery system for some type of debilitation. Correct, correct. Now, we do this for, for electromagnetic energy. So there's a, uh, there's a movable microwave device, which is an, it's a non-lethal anti-personnel weapon. Right. It's non-lethal. So if there's a crowd of people, you drive up this truck, you aim this antenna at the people, and it's like you just put them all in a microwave oven. Now, do you first get them to hold a burrito? <laughs> so they can eat it on the way. So, and you've got to take the wrapper off. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so what happens is their skin starts feeling hot, and they, and they want to go out of the beam. So they scatter. They scatter. They right. scatter. So right. this is how you can decentralize what might be a mob that, that's, that's coming. Um, is there any discussion in the military about um, weapons, the effect of weapons on people that are not just guns, that you're traditional? Well, there was, uh, not in this book, but one of my previous books, there was uh, Infrasound. I don't mm. know which book this was even about. They were there was this. She's got so many books. You don't remember which book remember. that was in that she wrote. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's badass actually. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's pretty badass. That's, like, and some book that I wrote somewhere. I, I, I believe I said. So what you can all you can all do is like buy them all. You buy them all. Lay them out. She's the point to it. And you let oh, me you, you let me know. That's it. You buy them all. Exactly. Right. So yeah, in, but infrasound. There was this talk about that they that the military was looking for. Uh, uh, non-lethal weapon, I think it was. It, supposedly, it would... Uh, infra- oh, no, it was, yeah, it was, it was infrasound, and it was, it was like long, slow waves. Low frequency low waves. Low frequency, and that it would, it would res- it have the same resonant frequency as some of the internal organs. So you, it would create fear, nausea, uh, uh, terror, uh, uh, but yeah, it never... This is like in, in, in Jurassic never, never Park. Never went anywhere. When T-Rex... Yeah. 
like the, the, the liquid right. in the, the yeah. right and you yeah. see the uh the vibration in right. the liquid in the glass <laughs> right, right 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 that type of deal yeah like yeah. they were going to like they would launch a ball of infrared mm -hmm. but anyway i could never find it that'd any. be enough there'd be t-rex would be one of the settings right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> by the way the military doesn't have to look for that we already have it it's called one direction yeah <laughs> they're a boy band Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was some concern about, uh, uh, NASA had concerns about, because the, the engines were put in you know, a launch, they would be putting out tremendous amounts of infrasound, and they were afraid they were going to deliver jelly to the moon, that it would, even it was so, that intense. But I think as it turned out, it wasn't. But in fact, they do have what they call a sound abatement system, and before every launch, in the seconds before they ignite the engine, you see this, basically, a swimming pool's worth of water dumped onto Whoa. the launch pad. And the water absorbs the acoustic reverberations. That's right. Uh, they were worried that the acoustic reverberations would just completely tear apart yeah. the entire bottom half of the rocket. Right, like the the, the, the singer with the glass breaking shadow. Yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah. Except now, so what they do is they put in the water. That absorbs the energy, right. and that way the energy doesn't hit the rocket again. So next time, watch very closely every single launch. And they're big tanks yeah. surrounding launch pads. They're water tanks. Bada bing! And then the vibrations hit, it vaporizes the water. So some of the smoke you see coming out is is steam, basically. That's cool. Vaporized by the energy, the acoustic energy of vibration. That's amazing. amazing. Give amazing. me one more question. Amazing. By the way, uh, that is the exact um, sound that it makes when the water is dumped. Bada bing. Bada bing. <laughs> awesome. It's ba awesome. Bada bing. Three words. Um, <clears throat> uh, Give it to us, Chuck. Okay, here's a here's a quick one. Since we are, don't have a lot of time, uh, tech advancement through wars from Maddie Stark uh, on Facebook says this: How do you feel about the idea that war is necessary for technological advancement? Ooh, let me let me let me cast that in a grunt question. Okay. Okay. So, how much have we? How much has war advanced medicine? A lot in terms of. Um combat trauma i mean did, did stuff like all right you get somebody whose artery is cut and they've got about two minutes so you know get it in terms of two getting before they're dead before they bleed out mm -hmm. and they're dead and like two minutes to uh stabilize get stop the bleeding stabilize them and get them somewhere they've gotten really good at that so emergency care um that's been huge and of course the whole concept also, of triage, triage, is, based triage. is a war-based yeah, yeah. war-based exactly. thing and also things you wouldn't necessarily think about uh there was a uh, navy guy Ca captain phillips not that other captain phillips gotcha but who came uh came up with this um discovery that if you you know if someone's got extreme diarrhea like cholera where you're like losing five gallons of liquid yeah. he even he invented this thing the cholera cot it's a cot with a hole in a bucket you're just you're and it, you're 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 gonna die quickly because you're just um, right, just leaking. Right, you're leaking. But Please. so, what has he invented? So, the so bucket? Invented, what? Why is that's not an invention? Like, well, the cholera <laughs> cot was one invention, but not the important one. The important one was if you add glucose to the rehydration fluids, mm -hmm. it, it enhances absorption of the fluids and the salt. So now you can drink them rather than hook up an IV. So in a third world country where somebody, right. uh, mm. they don't have to make their way to a clinic and get hooked up to an IV, they can actually drink this stuff and it saved, you know, millions of lives. Because so, it's still like two, you know, two so, some million people die. So here's, here's a morbid yeah. question. You ready? I'm ready. I'm always ready. Have more people, have more lives been saved by the medical advances from war than lives that have been lost from the waging of war itself. Wow. Interesting. Well, they, wow. you know, okay, well, here's a figure for you. <laughs> this war is good for you people. I know. We have to kill you in yeah. order to save you. Let's go to, let's go to commercial and we'll, we'll cogitate on that question. When we come back, Star Talk continues with our Cosmic Queries edition with Mary Roach, author of Grunt, The Curious Science of Humans at War. We're back, Star Talk. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your host and your personal astrophysicist. We're doing cosmic queries. Love cosmic queries. Chuck, you're helping me out here. Absolutely. Yeah, and you solicited questions from the from our, our internet base. Yes, we have. And you yes. they they knew in advance before I knew even what these well, questions. Well, you never get to see the questions. I don't get I don't even know what even though we're not trying to stump you. That's not the, the, the that's not the point. It's I not get the it. point here is not to give you a question that you cannot answer, but it's to uh, I think that might be the point. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's more fun for some people. Yeah. Not for me. I don't know. So uh, Mary Roach is with us. Yes. And her new book just released. This thing still smells like. It's got new book smell. New that book new smell. Book smell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can buy that and spray it on get your it, old get paperbacks. Get it for a few weeks and then it's old book smell. <laughs> uh, the curious science of humans at war. Mm -hmm. And and I left you with a question yes. just before the end. Yeah. I, I just wanted to know, given given how many lives have been saved by medical advances 
from innovations during war, could one make the case, the morbid case, that the number of people who have died at war is less than the number of lives who have been saved by the medical advances derived from it? Probably just from the, 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 the dysentery and diarrhea statistics alone. I mean, you're talking, okay, so 2.5 million people a year still, the WHO, that's the figure for deaths. World Health Organization. Yes, still, to from, this day. Yes. Uh, half, a million uh, people uh, die from dehydration, from diarrhea, diarrhea. A lot of them cholera children or some in, other. In, yeah, in developing nations. So right. that's a huge. Two and a half million a year. Two and a half million a year. Yeah. From, uh, from, yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so uh, 50 million people died in the Second World War. It was the last number I checked. So 25 years of that, right. that's just the diarrhea right. alone. Right. Plus but you've but they are dying. We didn't stop them from dying. So I want to know if lives have been saved. Not well, well, no, but she's saying that just the, the advancements that we've made uh, to combat that uh, may, may have saved uh, a, a significant number of lives. Whether right, or not it right, balances, but, we don't know. But. Right, but my statistic, that, you know, the, no, those, they're still dying. They're still dying. So, so what you're saying, that like, number could have been much larger. Much, right, much larger, right, right, yeah. Right. Right, if fine. that's the number they're still dying. Yeah. That's the number they're still dying. It would have been huger, right, right, right. Hu huge, huge, huge. It would have been huge. Huge. Right, right, right. <laughs> Just like my hair, huge. Okay. Huge. Huge. Yeah. Oh man! Not I like my hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But the no, you know what? There's some. I, I recently saw a statistic on the uh, uh, the number of deaths from car crashes versus the like every year that there's been a military conflict, the number of deaths just from car crashes dwarfs the number from killed in whatever the war that's going on. Okay, not not the Second World War, but surely since no, then. No, right. no, since then. Yeah, we lose th we lose 100, 100 yeah, people a day. And now, no, are they, only, not, are they not, only accounting American deaths, or are they counting the number of people? Because we tend to kill a lot more people. Yeah, than, exactly. Yeah, than, that's true. Right. That's true. But I can tell you, it's 100 people a day on the roads. And at the peak uh, of the Vietnam War, we were losing 100 servicemen a week. So it's basically a factor of seven higher wow. in yeah. cars than in military, right. not not the First World War, I mean, not the Second World War. But here's something I tweeted recently, that Second World War, you, do the, you run the math, mm -hmm. uh, we were losing 1,000 humans per hour. Wow. 1,000 wow. per hour died at the hands of another human being during the six years of the Second World War. Mm, wow. That's yeah. insane. Yeah, that's insane. However, the Mexican-American War, seven to one ratio uh, disease to combat injury, L oh. dysentery, Diarrhea, malaria, seven to to one. Of course, so you think Mexico and diarrhea, they're always going to be linked. Wow. Why, uh, that's, yeah, I know. So Poor true. Mexico, even back then. <laughs> even back then, so, don't but, drink the water back it, then. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there was that quote, William Osler, dysentery has been more fatal to soldiers than powder or shot. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. That's even as good as your chicken metaphor that you <laughs> let loose earlier. It was not. I'm not. <laughs> All right, Chuck, what else okay, you got? Here we go. Let's move on. <clears throat> Uh, this seems to be a big uh, theme that people want to know about, and uh, this is this is from uh, Aaron Heron Filth. Okay, that's the name. Uh, that's how you're pronouncing the name. But go on. <laughs> no, no, no. F I L T. Let me have fun with how you can't pronounce stuff. Okay. All right, go on. Uh, maybe you just wrote it. Maybe that way wrote it with, wrote it that way to make to mess with me. All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, Hi, Neil. Really love the show. Keep it up. My question is, in recent films such as Civil War, we're talking about Marvel Comics Civil War, mm -hmm. we see genetically advanced soldiers like Bucky, who is a character, uh, Captain America's friend. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm translating as he asked the question. And uh, the Winter Soldiers, uh, uh, also part of the uh, uh, genetically modified soldiers, uh, could super soldiers eventually become a reality? If so, what are the biological implications of doing such a thing? Greetings. From Mexico City. Whoa! <laughs> yes. This is a show for you. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so Mary. Go to Mexico City. It's supposed to be great. Uh, so Mary, are there studies of, uh, have there been attempts to modify the human physiology in war? I saw this amazing paper, uh, uh, DARPA. You know DARPA? Mm -hmm. DARPA is the way outside the box. Mm -hmm. Defense Advanced Research Project yes, Agency. Yes, yes. It was a paper. Uh, it was speculation. It was not projects that are underway, but they were listing like... Right, one of the whole points of DARPA is to have highly speculative research. Yeah. That could break open a whole new field of, uh, of military might. So That's cool. Okay. This was in particular modifications to the human body. What could we do? And inspiration from the animal kingdom. So they were, lo they were looking at... Uh, 
Unis, unihemispheric sleep, which you have in marine mammals and in some geese and ducks. Mm. And right. where, what Sleep with one eye open. Eye open. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. So they funded some research, so some basic research into you know, marine biologists and mm-hmm. uh, bird people. Ornithologists would be the, I guess, the word. The word yeah, like, I call here. them bird people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> look at, look at Bug people? I call them bug people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the bug people have probably been doing some work too. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, fun, just looking into, like, how does this work? And mm-hmm. could we foster this and somehow make our soldiers able to sleep? Yeah, you know, because sleep deprivation is huge yeah, and it affects much. your performance, your military performance. So if there were a way to sleep with one half of the brain and keep the other eye open to make sure nobody's sneaking up. Then you it. swap brain halves. Then, right. Yeah. They're presumably both halves need. Like sharks. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, so it was that. It was, an, it was an amazing list. There were things like, you know, the human llamas or, or could, you know, could you, you know, somehow have more hemoglobin for, for mountain warfare? Could you make somebody able to, you know, kind of sherpa eyes them quickly to be able to, you know, to, to function better at high altitudes? I do remember... Um, Surgically installed gills was on the list. Mm. Wow. Whoa. Okay. Now it's yeah. that's be like water lost. world right there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Water mm-hmm. world. Does right. Kevin Costner know about this? <laughs> that's right. We're gonna work on we're gonna try him when out he, first. When, you, when he came around his neck and you saw the gills yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, here's my take on that. Not that anybody asked, but I'll tell you my take. In the early days of space exploration, there yeah. was all this talk about modifying the human physiology to accommodate the stress and strain on our body in space. Mm -hmm. And in almost every case, they came up with an engineering solution to the problem rather than a biological one, where it therefore was not invasive to the human body. They would talk about, is there some pill you can take where the brain would not require as much oxygen when you do a high G turn out from a, you know, from a, 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 as a fighter pilot might when they're, when they're turning around. And and in that way, your brain wouldn't need as much oxygen. And still, and then the engineers just developed these these suits, right? right where they just they squeeze, squeeze your leg, yeah. squeeze your leg, blood ain't got no way to go. Right, yeah, yeah. right. So, so, yeah. so many of these are injured. How about a one where you don't feel nauseous and feel nausea in zero g, or you can just spin up the space station and create one g. So, right. so my my, yeah. oh you. We, do you want to make bulletproof skin or just make Kevlar bullet, and wear a bulletproof yeah. vest, yeah. right? Yeah. So I want the bulletproof skin. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, you're just saying. I'm just going to go on record and say the bulletproof skin <laughs> is what I would go for. So I'm, I, I'm more Tony Stark on this. Give me the give me <laughs> either suit. Give me the power, the, the money, and the brains, and we'll make we'll make anything we need. Okay. I will be able to fly. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. That's cool. No. All right, what else you got? All right. Um, Johnny Glasgow from Facebook says, Hi, Neil. It would be Facebook, our followers on Facebook. Our followers uh, on Facebook. Facebook headquarters. Right, right. right. Okay. exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. He's not actually having coffee with Zuckerberg <laughs> right now. Um, uh, he says, uh, Hi, Neil. Hi, Mary. Uh, what scientific advances made during wartime have the biggest positive effect on our civilian lives today? Mm. I'm going to have to go with the medical stuff. The medical stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The stuff we were talking about earlier. The stuff we were talking about earlier. That, yeah. is, that yeah. is the most positive effect. Positive effect. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, I guess you could talk about, I mean, if you could, like taking forward the whole notion of drones completely taking humans out of the equation, but that's, you know, it's got other issues. But uh, mm. the whole episode on Star Trek. Mm. Uh, that was indeed yeah. where they fought the war through Completely. mathematical calculations. Right. Yeah. And then people reported to a chamber uh, for, for of execution because the calculations showed that you would have been killed. You would have been that. killed in the in right. the They just walked in and right. they took him out. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that which is that Captain Kirk said, No, you can't do that way. Right. <laughs> that is not war. <laughs> war is ugly and bloody. Spock said, actually, though, statistically, <laughs> I can see the merit to this particular approach. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, well, that's cool. Yeah, that's so definitely the, the medical advancements. Is. That's what comes to mind in terms of a positive. Yeah, positive. Okay, I would but say. I uh, now, are there any technological say, advancements? I would say one thing. Go ahead. The V2 rocket was the very first intercontinental ballistic missile, which became the foundation of oh. our entire space arsenal. Yeah. Ah. So everything that we know and love about space, including where you get your 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 weather maps from from the Weather Channel, you get people saying, "I don't want to go into, I don't need. What do I need space for? I have my GPS and the Weather Channel. That's all I need." <laughs> <laughs> that's like get your get your government hands off my Medicare. <laughs> that's, right, exactly. that's what that yeah. statement that's is. Exactly yeah. what that is. So I would yeah, say, yeah, but no, no, Na- yeah, NASA. I mean, anything that's 
miniaturized fire. Oh yeah, the entire portable, miniaturized lightweight. Well, well, that was that was NASA, not war. I know. That was, no. I, there's, there's probably a, I, yeah, I, I, there's probably yeah, war didn't have to miniaturize the way NASA did. No, no, no. You have to sure. launch it for you know. Well, then every again, ounce cost you money. There's a war thing right, though. Right. The first way, it's ten thousand dollars a pound to orbit. Oh right. So if you got a little extra gut. Yeah, we, I ain't flying that in right. space. You, go, you go get back on a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> so how about this? Um, I believe the first computers were used to uh, yes. calculate the trajectory Ballistics. of uh, mortar shells. That is that is. Is that true. correct? That is true. Okay. Yes. Yep. So, yep. And now we have computers. Right. I mean, we know what they do now. Yeah. Yeah. So in fact, the military led the development of supercomputing. Yes. That's right. Yes. right. Nowadays, it's commercially driven because the demand is there. But in the in the day. Yeah. Back in the day. Right. There you go. All right. All right. All right. Well, not bad. Not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else you got? Here we go. <sighs> okay. Here we go. Uh, well, you know what? This is kind of the same question, so I'm going to skip that. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, do vets of armed combat face a disproport... I'm sorry. Christian... Your last name, I, I, I tried to get away without this, but I'm going to try it. Here we go. This is from Christian Prisblik. Prisblik. Okay, here you go, Mary. Take a look. <laughs> now at they're it. just messing with you, Chuck. Look at they're that. just messing with I you. Now, Christian, right? We're the Joe Smiths out there. Prisblik? Prisblik. Next time, Prisblik. can a Joe Prisblik. Smith please Prisblik. ask Chuck a question? I <laughs> know. Where's Joe Smith when I need him? Okay, Christian Pris Prisblik from Twitter uh, says this. Uh, do vets of armed combat face a disproportionate number of chronic health issues, and does race play a role, or and, or as well as class? So, class and race do they play a role in, in the uh, chronic health issues that vets face? And do vets face more chronic health issues than anyone else by virtue of being a vet? I would, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a tremendous amount. I mean, just like just starting with hearing the number one VA expense, hearing loss. Really? You come away with yeah. I mean, it's not just it is not just rifle uh, bombs going off and rifle fire. It's steady state noise. Like you're in a, a Black Hawk helicopter, right. which is like 106 decibels, and you're in for And so they, and then they have hearing protection. Chuck's Thanks. imitating a helicopter. Do you like that? Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Can you do a uh, uh, an M16? Uh, uh, well, M16 is a little bit more staccato, so it's M16, the rifle. Sounds yeah. like a duck. Yeah, yeah I, I do. I'm no, not but then there's the Huey from Vietnam. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it was yeah, a, that's, it was a, it had a pulse, it was a pulsing, pulsing sound. So you're saying the yeah. consistent, the oh, right, because the persistently, being persistently bathed in high decibel sound, just even beyond that, just whether yeah. you were near an explosion. Right. And, and the other problem is that when the, uh, when the noise, See, when things go kinetic, when there's fire, you know, when there's like, you, there's no warning. You don't have time to go, oh, you roll down my foam ear plug and pull my <laughs> outer ear back and put right. that, you know, you, there's just not time. And they're not going to wear that stuff all the time because you lose your situational awareness. You can't hear somebody shouting, get down, hurt somebody over there. So they... Uh, They've tried to do yes. that in some movies. Well, which... they have, yeah, they have, they, special operations is this really cool, you, bionic hearing. It's so cool. It's a headset and it... Uh, attenuates the loud noises. Yeah, so it changes and, the, the right. The range. So the loud stuff gets quieter, and the quiet stuff, stuff is amplified. Louder. So right. you're like the bionic. I was it's like did did so you can hear across the room. Like, hear a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, that was no, yeah. that was the eye. What you're doing? Oh, was that the eye? <laughs> <laughs> that oh. was the eye. <laughs> That was the ear? That was the ear. Okay, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. You know, Tammy Summers had Tammy the ear. Summers. She's, she had the ear. Now she's selling mattresses. <laughs> I don't know. Late night TV. Can you so, hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay, so that's interesting. So these, so, so. Anyway, yeah, but that's just, that's the biggest one. But then, um, yeah, uh, you, you got a kind of like traumatic brain injury and you got, yes. and, plus, and orth, orthopedic stuff. I mean, if you're in a vehicle that is designed to withstand an IED going off, I mean, you'll survive, you, you survive, but you, 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 you like the, the bottom of it would come up and slam into the right. foot and the pelvis and the spine. Speaking of that. Kinds of, of just wear and tear on your body, even if you're not blown up so speaking yeah. of that and this question is from but so these uh, are veterans that have been in combat right yes. not just yes. veterans 
generic veteran. Right, right. Because right. right. many, most veterans have not been in combat. Uh, right. So. Oh, so yeah. do they have more? Well, I, I, I don't know. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we but, presume it's combat veterans. Well, we, yeah, we would have to assume yeah. because I mean, I mean, uh, I'm going to say carpal tunnel doesn't count. <laughs> I've been sitting at this desk filling out these reports for weeks. <laughs> My wrists are killing me. Actually, I have this book called Dear Dear America, which is a collection of letters home from Vietnam. Right. That was collected before they made a Vietnam memorial here in Lower Manhattan. And so on the memorial are, are, these, are subsets of these letters. Wow. The book is all of them. That's cool. And, and just to your point, Mary, these are letters from all manner of servicemen serving in Vietnam. And there's some talking about like their friends getting blown up in front of them and, right. and, and wading through the muck and mire and the mosquitoes. Right. And then there's another letter of someone who's in, a, in, a, in an office right. in Vietnam saying, I can't, you know, <laughs> I don't want to laugh, but it's so hot in here. It's almost 94 degrees <laughs> and the fan doesn't work. I, th these working conditions are, are unbearable. Unbe it's like, do you have any fucking idea what's going on exactly. <laughs> around you around you right yeah. my typewriter Six. keys are sticking, sticking. Yeah. the humidity like, so i think Horrible. it's your, your biggest problem is your biggest problem that's right. really what that is yeah, yeah. whatever that's your biggest cool. problem is that's your biggest problem wow that's cool um Chuck, how many we got two and a half minutes how many questions can you squeeze into this all right you know what Try it. Here's, go here's the deal i'm gonna we're gonna go philosophical less olin hausa olin hausa says um do you think there can be, or ever has been, something that can unite humans so effectively as war? What a profound Ooh. question. Mars mission. Ooh, Ooh look at you yeah. with the Mars mission. Ooh. Landing a human Mars mission. Everybody's going to tune in to that, right? Mm. Don't you think? Mm. I don't know. Well, so, I, so I, let me agree and Go add ahead. to that. So I've thought a lot about things that unite humanity. Okay. So one of them is war which is the largest organized unification of humans that we experience. Nothing mobilizes us like a good war. Exactly. And what odd thing is that it mobilizes us against one another, but right. it's nonetheless mobil mobilizing. Another one is the Olympics. True. And another is the World Cup. Which, by the way, is a metaphor for war. <laughs> yes, it is, actually. And so, too, is the World Cup. Exactly. Uh, except you don't end up dead at the end of it. <laughs> right. So the World Cup, the Olympics, and the International Space Station. Okay. When you look at the cost of the International Space Station and the number of countries involved, it is the greatest collaboration of nations outside of the waging of war. Mm, really? You look at just the total yeah. investment that has gone in it, basically $3 billion a year plus. So, yeah, yes. So I agree landing on Mars could do that if it's done as a, as as a, a global national yeah, I mean, consortium. Exactly. As it's done, Which as it a, would be, wouldn't it? I mean, don't you think? It can be, but I don't have enough confidence yeah. in the human species to think yeah. that we wouldn't do it out of competitive yeah, urges like rather than moon, cooperative yeah. urges. So you're saying that mm -hmm. if we make it a reality show competition between countries, we're more apt to go to Mars than if we were just to wait for us to finally My come together. My feeling is that your urge to be innovative is greater stimulated when you're in competition than when you're in cooperation. That's my feeling here. Okay. Mm -hmm. As capitalism at its best reveals. Where right, you right. Wanna, you want, I want your money I don't want you to give your money to the other person. So now that competition drives me to be better than there the is. other guy. There it is. Gotcha. There it is. I think we're out of time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, well, let me just, so, 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 so Mary, yeah. let, me, let, me, let me break ranks here and pull away from Chuck's questions. Okay. Is there one other thing you want us to know about your book before we, before we end, end Star Talk today? Oh, gee, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dark topic, but it's an, Interesting, quirky, fun read. I don't want people to get. I mean, it, it's. A, you mean war is serious, but they're the people. People in the military have a good sense of humor, and it's. You have to. I you think. Know, yeah. You have yeah. to. Anytime there's death involved and life and death and all that. So it's. So it's um. It's fun. It's a fun. And you, you interviewed you interviewed servicemen. I was I was on a nuclear sub. I was in uh, Camp Lemony. They let you in. It took me a year and a half to get on. Yeah, that. I know. I know. Yeah. 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 They did. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Actually. It was cool. You know, it was cool. So so I was all over the place, and uh, it's it's just it's it's an interesting. It's a foreign culture, and uh, like any foreign culture, it's just a really interesting place uh, uh, to go and to learn about. So. 
Cool. Mary, thanks again for being on thanks. Star Talk. Thank you. So, and, and so we'll just, I want to be on your on your tour list every single time. Oh, you bet. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'll never get I want to be like the only show that had every one of their damn books. <laughs> right here. We get them we all. Six for six, so. <laughs> Well, we got to close out this part of the show. Uh, when Star Talk returns, Chuck Nice and Bill Nye take over the studio for a segment of maker themed cosmic queries. Yes. Ooh. Brought to you by Google. That's right. Maker themed. That's a whole new thing people are getting into. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of cool because uh, they're encouraging people to be makers. Yeah. You know, to uh, innovators, uh, inventors, uh, you know. I think we had lost some of that over the last couple of decades. Yes. And we're nice to bring it back. And now it's technologically, it's uh, IT based for a lot of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Chuck, I'll look forward to that segment. Uh, I'm out of here. We'll see you guys uh, next time on Star Talk. This is Star Talk.